Yeah. They'll say like the country it's from, but that's pretty much it. And yeah. even then I feel depending what country they say from, it's a little suspect sometimes. Mm. It, it's really like, it's so funny because when I started, um, you know, six years ago, I was encouraged to mislabel my hair and I get it. I really, really, really do get it. You know, call it European hair. It's still happening. Russian hair. I mean, I, I yeah. still get this. I went with this hairline because it's Russian, but it's, few hundred dollars cheaper like how does that even make sense and why would you even think you know but you know it is it isn't it is a secret that's coming i think within that industry people have known i don't think the consumers know about it a lot because they're still learning about it do you know what i mean so that's why we just got to keep because you know you don't want to piss off the industry you don't want to piss off other brands because they're just trying to and they've been misled by factories telling them what to say yes. so we need to get to the bottom of where it's happening I feel like there's still a couple of brands that are promoting Russian, but it's just called Russian hair. If you actually ask them, they might say it's not Russian hair. We just call it Russian hair. Like they can get hair from China or India. They can get hair from anywhere. But if it's processed in Russia, then all of a sudden they can put the Russian tag on it. But it's not true Russian Slavic hair. And I do think Russian Slavic hair exists, but if it's cheap, you better be real careful because true like Russian Slavic hair is incredibly expensive. 